record. So, um, first answer to the catalyst question. Um, the football player and the um, referee, they collide. That is officially collision. And this is true of all collisions. Momentum is going to be conserved in all collisions and explosions. Explosions could be like a real explosion, uh, like you're familiar with, a uh, car blowing up or a firework, uh, or just something stopping, like even me just throwing my, uh, my pen. Um, that's an explosion because I start with no momentum and I have momentum. So that, that's an explosion. And anytime something runs into something else, that is a collision. And in every single one of these scenarios, the momentum is conserved. In some of these scenarios, the kinetic, ener uh, kinetic energy is conserved as well. But in all of these scenarios, the momentum is conserved. So however much momentum the football player plus referee have at the beginning must be equal to the oops, initial, is gonna be equal to the momentum at the end. Now, if he runs into him, sticks with him, you know, that new, um, mass is going to slow him down considerably, but that's absolutely going to be the case. So I'm going to give you guys some notes on the different types of collisions. I want to, I'll give you a little bit of time to take out some pencil, uh, uh, sorry, a pencil and a notebook or open up something to write on. I think it's a whole lot easier to do pencil and a notebook, um, but take some time, get that out and we'll, we'll take some notes. First, on elastic collisions. We're gonna talk about elastic and inelastic collisions. And I'm gonna start by sharing this. This is a guy playing pool. And when he hits this ball and it runs into other balls, that is an elastic collision. Actually, a pretty darn close elastic collision. Again, these balls running into other balls, pretty close. And a good physics approximation of elastic collisions. So an elastic collision is when two objects collide. I'm gonna show you my screen again. Collide and bounce off of each other. without deforming, okay? And because it's a collision, momentum is conserved, but because it's an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. So however much inner kinetic energy you start with will be however much kinetic energy you end with after the collision. So Ke initial equals Ke final. And some examples are like um, billiard balls, and air hockey, pucks, and um, you know, atoms hitting each other, especially this one. These are all elastic collisions. 
Now on the flip side of that is an inelastic collision. I'm going to show you one of those. So, let's see here. Yep. Here we are. This is a very inelastic collision. You can see there's a lot of deformation. The car gets deformed a lot. So because of that, it is an inelastic collision. So let's go back to here. Collision where there is. deformation. Um, and in this case, kinetic energy gets converted into heat thermal energy. and sound. So anytime you hear a collision, I drop this, it is a uh, inelastic collision. So, um, and that's because when, when things deform, there are friction forces inside inside the the object that convert energy into heat okay so that is, um, and that's going to raise, so that's the heat energy. So an inelastic collision. If you hear a car crash, you know it's an inelastic collision. Um, and then there's, I'm actually going to make a table just to, to help clarify this a little bit. Let's see here. It's three by three. I recommend you make one too. So type of collision. Is momentum conserved? And is kinetic energy conserved? So we've got an elastic, inelastic. Is momentum conserved? Absolutely, yes. And is kinetic energy conserved? Absolutely, yes. However, in an inelastic collision, we know some of that convert, some of that energy is not going to be conserved it's gonna be converted to heat and sound. But the momentum absolutely is conserved. Now there's a very special type of elastic collision called a perfectly inelastic collision. Sorry, I said it's slightly off, but it's perfectly inelastic collision. That's where it's 
things stick together. Objects stick together. That could be clay dropping on the ground. Or let's see, I have the other video that I wanted up. Yep. Or this scenario where if you'll notice this red player just intercepted the ball and is tackled by his own player. Um, he went the wrong way. I always thought this was a funny video. But because he grabs on and holds on, they stick together. So it's a perfectly inelastic collision up to that point. So another example is a football player football tackle, where they wrap up. And hold on. That's a perfectly inelastic collision because they stick together. So two objects become one object. Um, or like two railroad cars. Cars coupling. Now, um, at the for almost here. Actually, maybe I have that video. One more video that I wanted to show you that maybe it went away. Is it here? Yes. So I I'm going to show you an example. He's got two balls here. And I want you to assess your knowledge. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to actually turn the sound off so I can talk. So, I'm going to show you the collisions and I'm going to ask you about the ball on the right. The collision is the ball with the ground or with the table here. And I want you to tell me is it an elastic, an inelastic, or a perfectly elastic collision? So, watch carefully. He drops the ball, hits the ground, bounces back up. So I want you to tell me, write it down, and then we'll uh, go through it. Is it an elastic, an inelastic, or a perfectly inelastic collision? I'll give you a little bit of time to write. In fact, I'm going to say, do you think it's an elastic, inelastic, or perfectly inelastic collision, and why? Write it down and tell me why. Guys, let's see. We got some time yet. A minute. Okay, let me take a. Ten more seconds. What do you think and why? All right. So it's not perfectly elastic because, or sorry, perfectly inelastic uh, because it doesn't stick. So that one's obvious that it's not that one. But it's less obvious whether it's elastic or inelastic. It is an inelastic collision. And the reason we know is because he drops it from a given height, right? So you know from where he dropped it from. It's right here. And then when it bounces back up, it does not reach that same height again. Because it does not reach that same height again, we know that 
it must not have the same energy coming up as it did uh, going down. Because if it had the same kinetic energy uh, right before it hit and the same kinetic energy after it hit, it should be going the same speed and it should uh, reach the same height again. Because all of that kinetic energy should be converted into gravitational potential energy. Um, so because it doesn't bounce up to the same height, we know um, that some of that energy must have been converted into um, uh, heat or frictional forces inside of the ball. So I'm going to switch back here. In, in elastic collisions are, um, I'm writing this a little bit, almost always the case in the macroscopic world. So like at an atomic level, absolutely, we're going to get elastic collisions in the mass macroscopic world. Always going to, I mean, evidence is the ball not reaching the same height. But if I played the sound on the video, you'd hear a little bit of a, a sound too. Sound from collisions, which is why we know that even with uh, pool balls, right? Um, you can hear pool balls hitting each other. So even with pool balls, physicists assume billiard balls or pool balls are elastic collisions. It's the closest thing in the macroscopic world that we can typically get to an elastic collision. So pool balls are rounded up, just like we assume as we throw things through the air, mostly there's not much air resistance. So with pool balls, even though they're not technically the case, pool balls, physicists, round up to elastic. Elastic, even though they're technically they are technically inelastic. They've got a little bit of deformation with the golf ball video. It's got a little bit of deformation when you hit it. Uh, so it's all inelastic in the macroscopic world. But the less deformation you have, the less sound you're going to generate, um, the more elastic it's going to be. But there, you will do problems where you assume that um, it's elastic. Um, and as such, you, you assume these two things. So let me give you the equations um, for these. So because momentum is conserved, just like in the video, Love to. Thank you. Then we must have initial momentum equals the final momentum. So if we assume two objects are going to run into each other, simplest case is oftentimes just object one and object two, and object one runs into object two with some velocity runs into object two where V is equal to zero. And then at the end, both objects have some velocity. V1 and V2 have some velocity, usually this is a smaller velocity. Uh, sometimes if it's perfectly elastic, then um, this one will only have the velocity. But anyway, we'll, we'll just give this scenario. So if this is the case, then m1 v1 plus m2 v2 
Uh, in fact, we're going to call it v i1, v i2 equals m1, the final one. This is a v plus m1, v final two, meaning the initial velocity of the first object plus the initial velocity of the second object time their respective masses equals the initial velocity of the first uh, or the final velocity of the first object plus the final velocity of the second object um, that just must be the case now if the initial velocity is zero and this term is zero and you end up with m1 vi1 equals m1 v final one plus m2 v final two. The thing you can add to this is if it's elastic, that's why elastic problems are the most complicated problems, then Ke initial equals Ke final. So because of that, we can do one half M1 VI1 squared plus one half M2 VI2 squared equals one half M1 VF1 squared plus M2, what one half, sorry, M2 VF2 squared. Or again, if this is zero in this scenario, then this term will be zero. Uh, so that gives you then a system of, I'll make this a little bit bigger, a system of two equations. that you can solve for different things with. So I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. One half M1 VI1 squared equals one half M1 VF1 squared plus one half M2 VF2 squared. You can use this equation and you can, what's that? Sure, be happy to. Come on, there we are. Now you have two questions because you'll you'll need to know the masses. You'll need to know, you know the starting velocity, and then if you know like one other thing, you know you can solve for this, or or you can uh, and and. Uh, if it's zero then you can simplify this. But if it's elastic, then you can use both of these equations. But if, if it's, because I set up the problem where we had one of the velocities was zero at the beginning, then I simplified it to this equation. If you didn't have that this initial velocity was zero, you would just leave it and put that velocity in there. So that's a good point. Only simplify to simpler equation if one of the velocities is zero. But I'm gonna give you one more equation for a, another special case where it is um, perfectly inelastic. These are the best kind of problems to solve. Love solving this type of problem because then we have object one and object two. Let's say again, 
that only one of these has a velocity, v1 plus, uh, we'll call this equal to zero, but you could do it where it has a velocity too. If they run into each other, then we have one object consisting of both of them that has its own final velocity. So in this scenario, we have m1 v1 plus m2 v2, and that's going to equal m1 plus m2 times the final velocity. And if this is even better, where since we have v equals zero again, we could simplify it even more to m1 v1 equals m1 plus m2 times v final. So if you know your initial velocity and you know your masses, you know your final velocity. Or if you know your initial velocity um, and you know one of the masses, uh, and you know your final velocity, you can solve for the mass of the other object, something like that. These are the simplest type of problems to solve in terms of momentum. Okay. So that's pretty much all the notes that I have to take. Do I have any questions on these things? It's got a little bit of time remaining in class, but not a ton of time remaining in class. Um, and the, the Ed Puzzle video goes over solving examples like uh, with numbers, two different types of uh, collisions. And then the, the con is just um, solving as well. Um, actually solving four problems. Oakley doakley. Then that is the day. Um, juniors, super mega good luck to you. Everybody else, enjoy your tomorrow. Thank you. You're very welcome your next day. Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay, you can turn that in. Okay, cool. Then that's great. Sorry that it wasn't loading for you. Remotesters, we are all done unless you've got questions for me. Oh, I, have a... I did, Pranav. Okay. Um, um, did you, were you able to look at it or? Not yet. Nope. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. But I'm looking forward to it. Very happy to that I, when I got that email from you, that was great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to finish sort of going over everything I need to go over by um, this weekend. So, you know, whatever extra units like the rotation stuff, hopefully I'll be done with that. So, okay. Excellent. Good, sir. Teachers and students, please pardon the interruption. Oh. Seniors, please remember you have to complete your survey for the senior celebration this upcoming Saturday night. So, please do that today prior to two o'clock. Try to get that response in so that we can make our purchase orders for Saturday night. Thank you. All right. Fun, fun, fun. Yes, sir. So right now I'm about to complete the registrations, I think. Excellent. Do you know if the parallel access one is on the I don't, but I'll write it down and I'll look. Parallel access That's a thing that I haven't thought about in a while. Parallel access. Yeah. Yeah. Access theorem. Oops. Okay. Okay. 